Hi guys, I'm Anna. And I'm Brian. And we are those, those annoying, annoying vegans. vegans. Thank you for joining us for yet another episode. We want to start this episode, of course, by thanking all of our patrons on Patreon. You guys are amazing. You support our activism. And if you are not a patron on Patreon, but you like the channel, you appreciate what we do, you get some sort of value out of our channel, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Everything that is donated via Patreon, as well as every dollar we earn on our Etsy sales, goes directly into our Animal Rescue Fund. And right now that means taking care of Antonio and Fireu's mm -hmm. medical bills. Antonio is getting his stitches out. He's doing well, so is Fireu. Awesome news about Fireu very soon. We also take donations via Venmo at Those Annoying Vegans. And do check out our Etsy store. We are almost out of some shirts and we won't be making more of them. So this is your last chance. We are going to focus on stickers because stickers are just a really portable way to do activism. So on to the topic of today's video. You guys commented on our previous video letting us know that there was this new video on YouTube called Is It Wrong To Be Vegan? put out by Goodful, a channel that has 1.14 million subscribers as of this video. Big so, platform, a yeah, lot of influence. A lot of power and therefore a lot of responsibility to do the right thing. And so we thought, ah, it's like a six minute video. Let's watch it. Let's check it out. Let's discuss and give you our thoughts. Okay. All right. Hey, Shaheen, is it wrong to be vegan? I don't know, Ari. We're just two adults who studied liberal arts and we smell our own farts and we're talking about the things we have. All right, so let's find out if veganism is actually making that much of an environmental impact. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry to, sorry to pause. Already. I know. Sorry to pause right <laughs> off the bat. Oh, but, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> uh, the video is called, Is It Wrong to Be Vegan? Now, bear in mind, being vegan, veganism is the belief that animals should not be needlessly exploited and harmed. Right? It's an anti-animal abuse and exploitation uh, ethical lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So... 25 seconds into the video, he says, let's see if veganism is as good for the environment as everyone says. You're not talking about veganism anymore. Yeah. You're talking about plant-based environmentalism. If we just replaced it with women entering the workforce, for example, and just said, let's see if it's really good economically to let these women into the workforce. The reason to let women into the workforce is because they are human beings. Mm. worthy of respect and equality amongst men. Women weren't granted equal rights because it's economically better or environmentally better. Yeah. Uh, women were granted equal rights because it's the right thing to do. Because we're equal citizens. We are human beings. Perhaps this video is going to be more about plant-based environmentalism and maybe this response mm. video will be all for naught. We'll see. We'll see. According to Joseph Poor, air transported fruit and veggies can create more greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram than poultry. Than poultry. Than poultry. Just poultry? Because what about every other animal, animal? product in existence? <laughs> First of all, air transported fruit and vegetable, that's very specific. And then only poultry. It says here, it's not highlighted, but it says mm -hmm. nothing really compares to beef, lamb, pork, and dairy. These products are in a league of their own in the level of damage they typically do to the environment. Oh. On almost every environmental issue we track. <laughs> it's weird that they didn't highlight that sentence. That sentence. <laughs> That's weird. They left that sentence not highlighted. <laughs> and then they highlighted this part of the sentence. Very strange. Okay. They're cute. Yeah, they're slick. There was a study in Italy where they looked at omnivores, vegans, and vegetarians. And randomly, two vegans in that study had the highest environmental impact. It was because these vegans were eating exclusively fruit. And to ship all this fruit from far-strung places across the world had a huge environmental impact. But that same study, if you look at all 153 people overall, yes, meat eaters had a bigger environmental impact. In the UK, for example, asparagus was found to be one of the most environmentally detrimental vegetables you could eat because they're growing that asparagus in Peru and then they're shipping it to the UK. Okay, adding on to that, we also want to take into account the fact that 
the vegan population, the plant-based population of the world is still very tiny compared to the mm -hmm. everyone else population of the world who consumes fruits and vegetables yes. <laughs> just the same. You know, it's like the avocado problem. Yeah. Vegans are not the only people consuming avocados. In fact, if we were the only people consuming avocados, then avocados would not be a viable economic yeah. venture. <laughs> We're selling a lot less avocados if only vegans bought avocados. And here they're saying, well, asparagus shipped to England is, is bad. Okay, but it's not only vegans in England eating asparagus. Yeah. So is it wrong to be vegan again? I don't know what that has to do with here. I think the question would be, is it wrong to eat asparagus? Is it wrong to eat asparagus if you live in England? Yeah, yeah. Not as catchy of a video title. No. No. Or is it wrong to eat pineapple if you live in <laughs> California? Yeah. Because most pineapples come from Costa Rica or Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Is it wrong to eat quinoa if it comes from Peru? If you live in northern Canada, is it ethical to eat anything? Because it's very cold up there. While livestock does have an impact on carbon emissions, it is not the leading source of environmental impacts. By far, the use of fossil fuels is the leading source of such emissions. Well, hold on. They're looking at U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. In 2019. Yeah, so the, the figure that a lot of vegans and plant-based uh, folks like to cite is like the FAO, uh, what was featured in Cowspiracy, which is that actually greenhouse gas emissions from animal agriculture is equivalent or greater than all global transportation combined, the difference there being uh, that's talking about global. Yeah. And clearly here they're listing U.S. greenhouse gas emissions in 2019. Yeah, but and let's not forget too that agriculture, 10%. Well, the U.S. consumes a lot mm -hmm. of animal products. So we have to account for those animal products that are being imported into the U.S. Yes. From all around the world. Oh, but it's not our fault because they're not being produced here, right? right. Yeah, the U.S. <laughs> demand, I think, needs to yeah account needs to account for that. I'm not sure if that's being accounted here. I believe Mike the Vegan did make a video about this like a year ago, talking about how the EPA came out with these numbers and they were dramatically lower than what is generally agreed upon by the FAO as the global impact. I think he's, he said that they might have used an antiquated way of measuring oh, okay. greenhouse gas emissions. They might have underestimated the damage of methane in particular, mm. because as we know, methane is much more damaging than carbon dioxide and cows produce a lot of methane. So there's just, I don't know, they're showing cows in this graphic and there's just no way that eating cows is good for greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah. Industry, electricity, transportation. A lot of transportation takes place in the animal ag industry. Yeah, and I mean, factory farms use a lot of electricity too, I would imagine, right? Are, yeah. they, are they factoring that in? I don't or know. Or when they say agriculture, are they just talking about the actual cows and chickens that are here in the US? That are emitting. And emitting CO2 and methane. Yeah. If we're talking about whether or not it's ethical to needlessly murder animals for products that we don't need, mm -hmm. You know, again, just replace the victim. If we were talking about like child labor and we were like, well, I don't know if reducing child labor is gonna cause that much of a... <laughs> no, it's wrong to force children into labor. The reason why people are vegan is because we don't need to eat animals. We have no biological need for animals. We don't need to wear animals. We don't need to put animals on our sofas or put animals floors. in our pillows or on our floors. We don't need to do makeup. any of this. Yeah. yeah. We don't need to blind rabbits for shampoo. I did this video where we did an environmental footprint calculator and the vegan actually, she had the highest environmental footprint because she flew cross country a lot. If you're vegan, but then you're also flying and driving a car, it's hypocritical, right? But also we're all hypocrites. Fair enough. And I think just trying to do something is better than nothing. One vegan flew cross country a lot? First of all, again, how many vegans in the world? How many people are flying who are not vegan? Mm -hmm. I guess that's where the hypocritical thing comes in, which yeah. is right about. 
Well, yeah, I, get, I mean, this video just appears to be about environmentalism. Yeah. So they're saying if you care about the environment, but you fly a lot, yeah. that's hypocritical. Yeah. So maybe a more accurate title would be, is it wrong to eat a plant-based diet if you're an environmentalist? Sure. But, but vegan's but, a trendy word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it gets the most clicks. I still don't get why they're bringing up, it's like they bring up things and then they explain why they're misleading. Like they're like the vegan had the higher carbon footprint, but it was because she flew cross cross country. A it's lot. tricky because you put that idea, <laughs> okay. you put that idea in people's minds right off the bat, so it's a little bit disingenuous. I mean, this is really why you need to have like controlled variables, like two people who drive and fly uh, approximately the same, and then the only thing that's different is what they eat, mm -hmm. then you can get a better comparison of the overall uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction by eliminating animal products. But if you have one person eating animal products and they stay at home every day, all day, they never drive, they never fly, they never take the bus, they never go on the subway. And then you have a vegan who's flying to multiple countries throughout the year. That's not a great comparison. Mm -hmm. A 2019 report written by a group of scientists recommends a largely plant-based diet which is purported to be able to feed 10 billion people by 2050, allow small and occasional allowances for meat, dairy, and sugar. How about that? That's all I'm talking about. I'm not here preaching eat meat every day, drink milk every day, but I do say that, hey, those things are nice. The problem is meat and dairy are not being produced sustainably. You can't produce the amount of dairy and meat that people consume currently on a sustainable level. That is absolutely true. Yeah. And also... Reduce sectarianism. Right? Yeah, but I think that's his position. And that's where I would say, when he says, those things are nice. Well, then we're not talking about veganism anymore because right. animal exploitation, animal abuse, the suffering of these animals at factory farms in slaughterhouses is not nice. It's never nice, even if it's your specific cheat day or if it happens to be Friday and you got off work and you're feeling like, I just kind of want this product now because I, me, my, I, my, me, because me and I, me, me, me. What we're talking about is the needless consumption of products of exploitation and abuse of our fellow sentient beings. There is no such thing as eating bacon uh, cruelty free. And for those of you who are always like, we should care about humans, this is according to UNICEF, the World Bank, and the FAO of the United Nations. 82% of starving children live in countries where food is fed to animals and the animals are eaten by Western countries. Mm -hmm. But I really need this right now. I, me, me. <laughs> Mainstream veganism has a history of appropriating traditional foods. There's a whole tradition. I don't even know what it means to appropriate a food. Food. Like if there was a restaurant here in Los Angeles that made authentic Costa Rican gallo pinto. I guess the only be, way would you be upset? Well, Maybe if they make with... a cheap McDonald's version of gallo pinto and then call it gallo pinto, would you be mad at that? McDonald's in Costa Rica sells gallo pinto. <laughs> Actually. Appropriation. <laughs> no, well, it's in Costa Rica, so I guess, okay, so if our traditional folkloric dress were to be worn by Americans, just, you know, someone going to a picnic or a party, I'd be like, oh my gosh, she's wearing our traditional folkloric dress mm -hmm. and it looks nice on her and it reminds me of my country. I don't know why that's what bad. What if she's not Costa Rican, what if she's Asian? So what? Babe, you don't understand why this is problematic. I guess I don't. I don't either, but I'm just <laughs> saying what I feel like I'm supposed to say. The thing is recipes are so malleable. I mean, gallo pinto exists in multiple Latin American countries and it is called something else in every single Latin American country because everyone adapts it to their culture and their ingredients that they like. I feel like what we've done is we've taken the word influence and then we've turned it into the word appropriation and then we get mad at people for doing it. Mm -hmm. Like if you grow up listening to uh, blues, for example, and then you use that blues influence in your rock band so that people can listen to your music and go, 
hey, this is a cool rock band. It has blues influence, and I can hear a little bit of jazz in there, and I can also hear a little bit of a reggae beat that yeah. the drummer's doing. That's all appropriation. We all have to stay in all of our different categories. We can't mix and match. We can't blend. We can't. I don't know. It's what, like you can't be influenced by anything. Were we talking about animal <laughs> exploitation? Let's. I know. What? What is Let's this? Let's go. There's a whole tradition of Eastern religions who have been practicing nonviolence and not eating animals and animal products for yeah. centuries. But when you think mm -hmm. something that we should all make maybe perhaps emulate. Wait, is she saying that because Eastern religions believe that we shouldn't harm animals, then like Western white people can't believe that because it would be appropriating that belief? No, that can't be. <laughs> Hold on, what? let me hit play before we... <laughs> when you think of mainstream veganism, yeah. you often think of white people. There's some people who say that... Hold on. Mainstream I, I feel like when people do this when people say when you think of blank you often think of blank i think you often think of white people when i think of mainstream veganism i think of mainstream veganism which contains people of, of a variety of colors and ethnic backgrounds and religions not, and sexual orientations and not wanting to exploit animals is not tied to someone's ethnicity or no. race or that's something that happens in the heart. She was also just saying that in other cultures and tra traditions and religions all over the world people have been not exploiting animals for centuries. Yes. So I find that there... <laughs> I think that's her problem though. I think, had, I think what she's saying this is... This had a root in that. Yes. But I think what she's saying is we should give the uh, we should give those cultures the credit for veganism because they've I mean, been sure. not exploiting animals for centuries. White people just started doing this ten minutes ago, <laughs> so we can't yeah, well, let the white people have credit for not exploiting animals. Well, I, I think is what she's saying. I don't care about credit. I just don't want people to exploit animals. And if we were in, if we can take that inspiration from you mm -hmm. know these cultures and traditions. Great. Yes. Great. Maybe I'm missing something. Hold on. Veganism is hurting indigenous farmers because the demand for these certain foods like quinoa, now everyone wants them and all the health food stores are carrying it. Yeah. So much. But vegans are not the only people who eat quinoa. It's only us vegans eating quinoa. It's only us vegans eating asparagus and avocados and what else? Everything that harms the planet what? What is, is vegans' fault. I know. What is this logic? Else? You don't like the way quinoa is farmed, so let's blame vegans for yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. The demand for quinoa is higher now than it used to be at one point. Mm -hmm. But that's not vegan's fault. Yeah. So much so that people in Peru and Bolivia, where quinoa is traditionally grown, have sometimes not even been able to afford it. Around 1.3 billion people depend in some way on raising animals for their livelihood today. In Iran, for example, you have traditional nomadic tribes mm -hmm. that still exist. They rely heavily on their cattle mm -hmm. for dairy and for meat. So because these nomadic tribes and other indigenous people around the world are fully dependent on animal agriculture for survival, mm. then those of us who have access to other options shouldn't avoid products of animal exploitation. I'm not seeing the logic yeah. here. I think it's tribes people though. I think that's the meme here is, yeah, so that's hey, this a... group in Iran needs cows, so someone in Scranton, Pennsylvania can eat McDonald's guilt-free. Yeah, so the, usually when we talk about veganism, we are talking about the people who can, who mm -hmm. have those options available to them. If mm -hmm. you have those options available to you, then you are responsible mm -hmm. for making the right choice. It's interesting you should bring that up because I believe uh, Goodful also made a video about zero waste. But I think that if you do have the luxury of privilege and time, I think it's your responsibility. The fact... Oh, that's weird. So if you do have the luxury and the privilege and the time, it is your responsibility to be zero waste, but not your responsibility to be vegan. That's assuming that being vegan is a luxury, which it's it isn't. Not. It is more affordable. Granted, not everyone has the same access to the same foods, mm -hmm. but for those who do, if you have options, then the whole luxury 
point is moot. I was just following their logic. If we just grant that being vegan is uh, elitist or expensive, which it isn't, but let's just grant that it is, then their argument would be that everyone who can afford to be vegan should be vegan, mm -hmm. including these two. But I get the feeling that he is not vegan. I don't know. Maybe he's just playing devil's yeah, maybe advocate. Maybe he's just playing devil's advocate, yeah. But also, that is their source of livelihood, so they love and care for those animals, and they don't abuse them to a point where they are not a renewable resource for them. Whoa! Okay, animals are not renewable resources. Yeah. They're sentient beings. They're not resources. They're, they're not, not yeah. things that we just... They're not, they're not two by fours. Yeah, they're not renewable. Once you kill an animal, that animal is gone forever. Yeah. That sentient being, that person that's inside that animal, the living entity that experiences life subjectively, that individual is gone because someone wanted to eat a 15 minute meal. Made from their skin, their muscle tissue mm -hmm. that belongs to them. Yeah. Now granted, uh, I think what people mean when they say animals are a renewable resource, what they mean is we could forcibly impregnate a mother animal and make her have more babies. I don't think that's the same thing. No. We could continue to artificially and forcefully impregnate these animals so that they give birth to more babies that we will then kill. Now, I know some people are doing this for ethical reasons because they don't want to harm any living being, but they also have to take into consideration that in some cultures, both historically and currently, there is no other way to survive. So I wonder if people who are vegan take into account that a lot of people who aren't vegan have been so traditionally in harmony with the earth. Uh, yes, we do take that into account. Vegans do acknowledge that there are some cultures, some people in the world that do rely on animals for their survival. That's why the definition of veganism includes the words possible and practicable, meaning that if you can avoid animal exploitation where it is possible and practicable for you to do so, you should do it. And what that generally means is for people living in places like Europe, Canada, the United States, Australia, Central America, New Zealand, South America. <laughs> The majority of America can afford a Big Mac more than they can afford just basic salad ingredients. If we can't address that... Basic salad ingredients. I would like to know what those ingredients are, because if you're talking about lettuce and tomato and carrots, um, those are really cheap. But if you replace the salad with two potatoes, mm. you're talking about pennies. Yeah. And that's cheaper than a hamburger. Healthier. Mm -hmm. better for the environment, better for the animals. Yeah, I mean, he's comparing a Big Mac to what seems to be a, a largely lettuce salad here. As Anna said, if you replace that Big Mac with lentils, beans, potatoes, rice, um, some of these staple foods that are very cheap, especially if you buy them in bulk and dried, very cheap. We made a video before about the artificial cheapness of fast food. Yeah. Like people think buying a McDonald's meal for $7 is cheap. I don't know why. Maybe it's more of an immediacy thing. But we also know that these products are artificially lower in price because they're subsidized. Again, that is a problem. I don't know that that's like a vegan problem. Well, and look at all the healthcare costs too that will mm -hmm. eventually go into repairing the damage that was caused mm -hmm. by these products. Address that, then I don't think there's any more to address. This gets into food justice. If you don't have the buying power to get all the products that you need to have a nutritionally sound vegan diet. Maybe being fully a vegan is not for everyone and not to preach it as something everyone should be. This just sounds like yet another, like, not everyone can do this thing, so I don't have to. But if you can, you <laughs> if should. If you can, you should. The average American eats three hamburgers a week. I think that's too many hamburgers. That may be too many hamburgers. And yeah. I think no such thing if they're plant-based, though. Yeah, we eat we burgers eat all the time. We eat a lot of burgers. <laughs> plant-based burgers. Veganism is a natural response to that extreme. We don't need to be eating meat in every single meal. Let's say someone just... We don't need to be eating meat at all. I'm glad she called that the extreme yeah. because a lot of people yeah. call veganism the extreme. extreme. Yesterday at the store, when we went to the store, I was mm -hmm. looking around at all these foods 
that don't contain animal products. It's funny because when you talk about plant-based foods to people, they're like, ew, vegan, do plant-based. Yeah. I'm like, you already eat most of this. Yes. You don't even realize like a lot of the stuff you eat is already plant-based. Yeah, even in the aforementioned, you know, burger uh, scenario, if you eat a cheeseburger with French fries and a soda, the only two ingredients in that entire plate that aren't plant-based is the meat patty and the cheese that's on it. Easily substitutable. <laughs> and maybe the mayonnaise, if there's mayonnaise on the burger. But like all the toppings are plant-based. The bun is plant-based. The french fries plant-based. Soda is plant-based. <laughs> I don't know if soda is plant-based. You can eat <laughs> food and it's plant-based. Soda is like not even plant. Soda is petroleum-based. <laughs> but yes, to your point, it's like people act like, you vegans are extreme. It's really extreme when primates eat plants. Isn't that so weird? Bunch of primates walking around eating plants. <laughs> oh, I know. Fire agrees. Someone just reduced by 50% their meat intake, but at the same time changed other things. By 50% changed the amount of driving they do, and by 50% reduced the amount of flying they do. They don't theoretically fall into the bracket of veganism, but one might say that they've done more because they've done a more balanced reduction. I think that that's... Again, we're conflating veganism with plant-based environmentalism here. We could just replace the victim and see if it works. Like, this guy's actually doing more for the economy by oppressing his wife a little bit. I'm not just gonna let my wife go work full time. Come on, <laughs> come on, <laughs> come on. Forces people to have to be way more educated, which is something that inherently sucks because people don't want to take that kind of time. It's not gonna be catchy. It's gonna you be... You don't get to have the pin that says, yeah, I am have the moderately yet. consuming things in an appropriate way. That's a lot for a button. It's a lot easier just to put vegan yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, to be vegan. Maybe the better thing would be to just kind of be more chill about your veganism. And there are chill vegans. And of course there are chill vegans, but there is... Just, just... What does that mean, chill Just vegans? Just let me abuse animals and not feel guilty for it even though you're opposed to it morally. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah, you know those chill, civil rights activists, they don't get in anyone's face. Yeah. That's, you know, just be one of those people. Come on. Like, don't be one of those like, oh, gay people should have the right to vote always in all situations and all scenarios. Like, dude, if I want to be homophobic, just let me be homophobic, bro. We are still looking at animals as not equally deserving of rights. Yeah. Basic rights, like the right to live a life free of suffering. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm not saying the right to vote because they can't vote, but the right the right to, to not autonomy, be, yeah. the right to have their bodies belong to them. Mm -hmm. The right to not have their tails cut off as infants with no anesthesia. Or their teeth pulled out, or their babies ripped out of their wombs. Mm -hmm. Because we want milk, not we, they, mm -hmm. people. <laughs> Humanity. Total douchebags out there, just like there are total douchebags out there who are me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, Self-deprecating joke to... Uh, to lighten to the, the mood, to deflect away from <laughs> the decisions that he's making that are immoral. I think this video is a great example of why it's important as vegan activists to always put the victims and the ethics first. Mm -hmm. Because when you are vegan, you are vegan for the animals. You're vegan for someone else. You're not vegan for yourself. You're vegan because it's wrong to needlessly exploit and harm someone else. I'm sure the reason why they chose to focus on environmentalism is because there is a little bit of a debate. Well, what, what about these greenhouse gas emissions versus these ones? And what about driving versus flying? And what about this versus that? When we're talking about just needlessly murdering someone, there is no this or that. Yeah. It's needlessly murdering someone. Is it wrong? Yes. Again, we wouldn't be making videos if this were at all about any other sentient beings that we already perceive as worthy of these considerations. Like if we were talking about dogs in the United States, or if we were talking about babies or children or toddlers or women or people of color or people- The elderly. Yeah, the LGBTQ community. Like all of these different groups of sentient beings that we've decided, hey, you guys are cool, you deserve rights. These animals over here. Animal abuse is wrong up until I want to eat them. Mm -hmm. Then killing them is okay. It's okay because I drive less sometimes. Plus, people in Iran have cattle that they rely on. So, 
Well, that is, uh, is it wrong to be vegan by Goodful? Uh, you yes. guys wanted to hear our thoughts. Those are our thoughts. We watched through it. Uh, Ah, well, here we go, just in the very first, <laughs> oh, wow. one okay. of the first comments on here. Yes, let's conveniently ignore the fact that around 80% of crops grown are fed to animals, which are then fed to us. This video made me cringe. I really hate the transportation argument. Are vegans really the only people driving up the demand for quinoa and avocado? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I don't think so. Also, it's completely unfair to acknowledge transportation emissions for vegetables when grains and soy grown for animal feed is shipped across the country or imported. Is it wrong to care about other sentient beings? There, I fixed the title. Love it. Love the vegan <laughs> wow. activism in the, in the comments, comments. section. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a lot of vegans in the comments section. Holy cow. This is crazy. Okay. <laughs> wow. Once you go vegan for animals, you really understand why hearing things like, I'm only consuming 50% or 70% animal products is still horrifying. The fact that the animals' lives weren't considered in this tells me all I need to know about these people. Well, I, you know, I don't know them. We they don't know them. They could be vegan. They could. Well, no, because if you were vegan, I don't think you'd be planting doubt in people's minds. I honestly found this video to be riddled with misconceptions and it's something I'd have expected maybe like five years ago when virtually no one understood veganism, but I guess I have to assume that there is still a lack of understanding on this way of life. I realize you were trying to provide information, but these points seem to be half researched at, at best. Honestly, it would have been super nice if you guys looked up the definition of veganism <laughs> before you made an entire video on it. Let me help. <laughs> veganism is a philosophy and wow. way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purposes as coined by the Vegan Society. Thank yeah. you, Ashley Gillette. Ashley Gillette. She goes on uh, to cover some of the other points, but I think that's perfect yeah. uh, a conclusion. So those are our thoughts on uh, Is It Wrong to Be Vegan by Goodful. What were your thoughts on the video? Let us know in the comments below. Of course, we want to thank our patrons on Patreon. You guys are amazing. And if you want to become a patron on Patreon, the link is in the description. Until the next video. Bye. bye.